Hey everyone, this is Isaac from IlluminatiWatcher.com. As promised, I am going to do a post-analysis of Lady Gaga at the Super Bowl halftime show in 2017. Most of you know, uh, based on the first video and article, that I predicted Lady Gaga would be giving us some version of occult messaging and agenda, and sure enough, that is what we saw. Now, we're going to take a long journey here, and I will try to not... Uh, lose any of you on this because uh, there's a few things going on here as an overall explanation it appears that this Super Bowl performance was part of the Illuminati agenda to push us into a race war while promoting the symbolism of occult magic and controlling the cosmos through transhuman interfaces now, I'm going to explain all that here in a bit and uh, disclaimer I do not want to discount genuine issues with racism that the uh, you know our culture has but I believe through my past couple years of research primarily into the uh, Manson family murders that there is an agenda to divide us based upon anything that they can find and they found that racism is the best way to do that now let's look into this idea of the uh, the race war and why they would want that they want to divide us so that we fight amongst ourselves and are distracted by what they are doing. What they are doing is accumulating wealth, i.e. power, and they want to use that in order to pursue their agenda, which is Luciferian in nature. The average uh, worker's wage is 200 times less than the average CEO, and that rate keeps increasing um, much faster than the average worker's wages. But Let's talk about the Super Bowl, because that's what you're here to listen to. First off, we saw them wheel out George H.W. and Barbara Bush. Many people have rightfully assumed that they are part of the Illuminati royalty uh, due to their bloodlines. You know, his father, Prescott Bush, was a, a banker and a politician. And there's allegations that he helped fund the Nazi party through his involvement with the Union Banking Corporation. And of course, if that is true, then... That ties him in with the Nazis who were channeling aliens and using uh, magic rituals to do various occult things, including trying to find the artifacts of the Knights Templar who worshipped the Baphomet and so on and so forth. So if you look at the entire male dynasty of the Bush family, we got Prescott, George H.W., who was at the Super Bowl, and George W., they were all members of the Yale Skull and Bone Secret Society, which I actually spoke about in the predictions side of the house because Lady Gaga was talking about Yale herself. Now, uh, the why do the Skull and Bones have connections into this whole idea? It's because of the Memento Mori philosophies and the skull symbolism that they share with the Freemasons, as well as contemplating one's own death. Now, if, if we go a little bit further in on this, Barbara Bush is alleged to be the daughter of Aleister Crowley. That's right. Uh, Prescott, Bush's wife, Pauline Pierce, was supposedly into uh, various sex parties and even sex magic rituals with the ceremonial magician Aleister Crowley, and the timing of her visit to Crowley in Europe coincides with the conception of Barbara, who actually looks exactly like Aleister Crowley. So here we see the Bush family, alleged ties with Nazis, and the Nazis had their obvious occult agenda. Uh, which was pursuing the New Age Blavatsky super race of Aryans. Again, there's another racial component there. Uh, and then we also have Aleister Crowley and the power of magic flowing through the bloodlines of these Bush uh, members. Uh, another interesting kind of connection here, Crowley was actually part of the fight against the Nazis when Winston Churchill used his advice to uh, put out the symbol of the sign of Typhon, the peace sign or the V, during the Second World War. And we're going to actually talk about that a little bit later as well. Here's something we're going to take a side detour because it's instrumental in understanding what I'm about to say. We're going to talk about the Manson family affiliations. Uh, you know, the Manson family was obviously part of that hippie New Age movement until Charles Manson took his family to the spiral staircase in L.A. to meet a satanic witch. Now, Charles Manson in his books talks about how the, uh, his family was full of love and whatnot until they went there and they confronted evil and became possessed under its influence. So, some period of time later, 
They conducted the infamous murders of Sharon Tate, who was married to Roman Polanski, the director for the satanic occult film Rosemary's Baby. Uh, and they also later killed the LaBiancas. At the LaBianca residence, the Manson family members wrote the word rise on the wall in the blood of the victims. And the reason they did that was because they were trying to trigger a race war that Manson called Helter Skelter. Now, another side fact that's interesting here. The LaBiancas had moved into this house on Waverly Drive where they, uh, you know, met their tragic end. Uh, but before that, they owned a house that was owned by Walt Disney, which will come up again later as well. I'm going to put all these pieces together. So let's take a look at the word rise and why that is a trigger for the race war. You know, obviously Manson and the family had their beliefs in the Helter Skelter rise. But I've actually been analyzing this for the last couple of years. I have a whole video and article about this entire concept and how there are many pop culture references to this word rise. So when we see during the Super Bowl, the Atlanta Falcons are using the term rise up as part of their propaganda campaign. It triggers the same ideas. When we talk about this Illuminati stuff, we talk about symbolism and talking to the subconscious. Because a lot of these ideas, they're not very overt, they are more covert. Uh, the Illuminati and uh, some of these occultists, they listen to the advice of Carl Jung, who was studying the subconscious, and he was a noted Gnostic and occult person of his own doing. He's into alchemical processes and all this stuff. Uh, but anyways, the, the, even if something doesn't seem to be what it is on the surface, there is a subconscious and a deeper meaning to it. So, the Falcons have the Rise Up symbol. Then, another idea with the Super Bowl is somehow this became a battle between Trump and the anti-Trump movement. Because the New England Patriots were affiliated with Donald Trump due to Tom Brady's and uh, Bell Belichick's adoration of, the, of Donald Trump. Therefore, the Atlanta Falcons were somehow the team for the, uh, you know, the, the liberals or maybe even just the anti-Trumpers because there's a lot of conservatives that are anti-Trump. Bill Maher even had a whole segment on it in his most recent episode of Real Time where he talks about cheering for the Falcons because the New England Patriots are pro-Trump. So we have this battleground of the, you know, the race war idea, Trump, non-Trump, because Many people allege that Donald Trump is racist himself. Uh, <clears throat> you know, if that's a propaganda machine of the mainstream media, perhaps. I, I don't know. I don't study the man that deeply. But he's got associates that many claim are actual racists. Uh, Richard Spencer, Steve Bannon, and even David Duke, who was an actual KKK Grand Wizard. And as you know, I don't take either side. I do not like Trump. I do not like Clinton. I do not like anyone who is that powerful and that wealthy. I do not trust them feel like at some point you have to get on board with the Illuminati Luciferian agenda if you want to unlock all of the doors. So what we got here, just to recap, Super Bowl, we've got Trump versus everyone else. This is affiliated with the Falcons and the rise up sigil of Manson's Helter Skelter race war. So the topic in question is Lady Gaga and her performance and how that plays into all this. Well, first off, we saw the infamous 666 hand that Lady Gaga has been known to do in the past many times. Uh, she did it. Her her backup dancers did it as well. Again, this is symbolic for saying you are a uh, in the womb of the Illuminati. Another thing on the stage, we saw the twin pillars of alchemy, the Boaz and Joaquin. Again, this is like heavy-duty occult symbolism. We see it in Freemasonry. Uh, it's the alchemical process that I, I was talking about earlier, and Carl Jung talked about uh, combining the conscious and the subconscious mind and that is symbolic of Boaz and Joaquin the uh, you know the practitioner is to find equilibrium between these two opposing forces and the entrance to this mysterious place where they find themselves is between these twin pillars now that's why you see them at the entrance to Solomon's temple and every single Freemason temple on the planet next we see the mark of the beast uh, a good friend of mine, Freeman Fly, talked about this on his uh, show with Bill Church. He talked about how we might see the Mark of the Beast, and he was correct. Now, the Mark of the Beast is this X symbol, and here we see it more of a uh, in the cross form, the T. Uh, but you can see it, and the symbol is, again, 
calling uh, calling upon Typhon. This is the same symbol the V uses from uh, Crowley and Churchill in World War II. They're trying to call upon this dark lord. They are channeling the spirit of Isis. It's a goddess archetype. And as I talked about in the prediction video, Lady Gaga is here to channel the goddess. She had made contact with the goddess, and that is why she had this mental breakdown, I believe. Seems that uh, Crowley warned of making contact with these entities would break one down, and that is why Lady Gaga was going through some serious breakdowns in the past. Uh, so, <clears throat> the Mark of the Beast, that's kind of a more complex topic. I've got an article on IlluminatiWatcher.com called The Mark of the Beast, The Illuminati Mark of the Beast, excuse me. And in it, we talk about how the X and the O are used to fuse together to call upon this goddess of Isis, or the Dark Lord Typhon. And how interesting is it that during the Super Bowl, many times we see the advertisement for the latest X-Men film, Legion. Or series, I should say, not a film. And on this television series for Legion, you see the X and the O merge together. Again, the X-Men, Superman, the Super Race, the Aryan Race, the New Age Blavatsky ideas, these uh, occult beliefs in Atlantis and these super beings that these uh, Illuminati occultists seek to call upon. Now, towards the end of the performance, you'll see something of alarm. The drones were powered by Intel, it turns out. So it seems that these drones that were in the sky, which are part of the uh, you know push to destroy privacy and bring in a transhuman movement which merges man with machine, draws closer as they show us and try to amaze us with this technology. Again, these, these occultists believed in this idea of Atlantis and this hidden, uh, you know, forgotten technology, and they want to try to make, uh, you know, contact with these entities and push the transhuman movement so that they can become gods. It's all part of this kind of new age fantasy of contacting other dimensions and going out into the cosmos and, you know, colonizing Mars, uh, which is interesting because Trump actually assigned Elon Musk, who's the founder of Tesla Motors, and he has no qualms about saying he wants us to colonize Mars. So, you know, Elon Musk is assigned to the Economic Advisory Council as part of Donald Trump's team. Now, let's talk about these drones and Intel. Intel is part of the agenda, allegedly, because of the ring around their logo. That's the ring of Saturn. And in fact, Lady Gaga worked with Intel last year during the Grammys, if you recall. I wrote an article called Lady Gaga, Prometheus of the 2016 Grammys. And the, the idea of Saturn, if you're not familiar, is that Aleister Crowley had these, you know, Thelema followers, and one of the groups was called the Brotherhood of Saturn. And this magical group was similar to other occult groups that were uh, into the same ideas. It's this idea of mastering this occult knowledge and the uh, different aspects of man connected to the cosmos and ritual magic in order to evolve oneself, uh, oneself through a series of rituals and different steps like you see in Freemasonry. These occultists worship Saturn because they think it is the outermost planet. At one time it was. They thought you know, it was the sixth planet. And they, uh, they use the persona of Saturn as the Dark Lord. So, it appears that Intel is again in control of Lady Gaga's performances. 2016 at the Grammys, she was inside the cube, which we know the cube is a symbol of Saturn again. Um, but we also find out that Disney World is utilizing these same Intel drones for a similar performance at their theme parks. We're talking about the power of magic. That's what Disney talks about all the time is magic. And it's quite literal to these occultists. So we've got these six degrees of separation. Many of you are already familiar with a lot of these topics. It's the LaBianca Manson murders. Uh, LaBianca is tied to Walt Disney. Walt Disney using the drones. The Rise Helter Skelter system, Aleister Crowley, and the Dark Lord of all, Saturn. I believe the Illuminati are utilizing the dark forces of Saturn to divide us. They want to make us believe in this concept of a racial divide and distract us from what they are doing. As technology increases, they are able to do much more with it. So the power of distraction is much more important now than it ever was. So when we see the Super Bowl 
and all the symbolism of race war ideas. We've got the Patriots, which are the Trump team, and the Falcons, which are not. Uh, and even during the performance, Lady Gaga, uh, she actually hugs one person from the crowd, one fan, I, I suppose, and she is you know, obviously not Caucasian. And it seems to me that she uh, is doing this. She did it after the song A Million Reasons to Stay, and it's almost like a symbolic uh, thing for her because she's obviously anti-Trump. And, you know, this, this fan that she hugs is part of the group of people that Trump allegedly wants to remove from this country, right? So again, we're talking about a subtle cue of a race war and taking sides on this. Now, I'm not trying to minimize the actual issues of racism in our country. I'm just making the point that the mainstream media and the entertainment industry are not to be trusted. They are pushing the issue that the Illuminati want. The Illuminati want distraction. They want us to fight amongst each other. I do not trust uh, the mainstream media, you know, to a certain extent, uh, because they didn't investigate many things that should have been investigated these last few months. We're talking about Hillary Clinton seizures, Pizzagate, the Lolita Express that were tying into Bill Clinton and Donald Trump. Uh, but the Super Bowl is being used as another component in the attempt to distract us. Same tactic used in ancient Rome with the bread and circus ideas. Uh, and the only way we're going to break out of this is to have an independent thought. Don't be consumed with this entertainment. Don't be consumed with mainstream media and all their lies. Uh, you know, have a little perspective. Take in multiple views. You know, if you like CNN, start listening to a little bit of Fox News and find the uh, middle ground. Find out what makes sense because I can tell you both of them are slanted in their own direction. Uh, of course, the Illuminati agenda is to destroy any idea that's not part of the uh, Hegelian dialect. That's why they're labeling, labeling it as fake news or alternative facts. It's a very confusing time to be in, in America here. Uh, but as predicted, they use the power of magic and the false belief in controlling the cosmos through the practice of ceremonial magic. That's what we saw during the Super Bowl when Lady Gaga was positioned up at the top as the goddess archetype in control of the cosmos. Uh, she's portraying the hermetic axiom as above, so below, and she is controlling the stars, these, these drones of intel. So what are we to make of all this? I believe, as cliche as it sounds, love conquers all. Don't let all this harsh language and dark symbolism of the Illuminati occult magicians persuade you to hate someone else over something as trivial as the color of their skin. You know, the Illuminati's belief in racial dominance stems from the occult ideas of Charles Darwin and Blavatsky, and uh, this idea that some races are further evolved than others, which is utter nonsense. If you want to overcome this, you have to become united as a community. You need to help each other and expose the dark arts for what they are while raising awareness. So share this video with everyone you know. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've got a lot more information on some of these topics. I know that was a lot. I know there's some things that you're left scratching your head if you're not familiar with the, these ideas. Uh, but if you go to IlluminatiWatcher.com, you sign up for a free email newsletter, and that unlocks the archives, which will step you through many different examples, and you can start to understand the big agenda of what's going on. Thank you much. This is Isaac from IlluminatiWatcher.com.